All right, today we're going to be talking about the uh, Algebra 2 Fall Final Exam Review. Uh, this is a major part of your grade, so you're definitely going to want to study up. The design of this video is going to be I will do about half of the problems. The rest of the problems I've determined are easy enough for you to type in and figure out on your own, or you can use the examples that I do as reference and you can figure out these problems on your own. Uh, we're going to start with number two, which involves subtracting polynomials, which is a little bit easier than adding them, which is what number one is. So in here, we're going to be subtracting two functions. We're going to take g minus h of t. So essentially, we need to take g of t minus h of t. To do that, we just have to see which parts go with what. We have g of t right here, which is 2t minus 3. And we have h of t right here, which is t minus 3. So we just plug in those two things. So for g of t, we put uh, 2t minus 3. We just copy it right down. That's exactly what g of t is. Uh, to do h of t, we have to subtract, and I'm going to put it in parentheses because we have to distribute the negative. We are subtracting h of t, which is t minus 3. Okay, and I'll try to color code so you see where all the parts come from. Okay, once we're here, we're going to take that negative right here and we're going to distribute it to everything inside which is gonna flip all the signs. So the positive T is gonna become a negative T and the negative three is gonna become a positive three. The left side is gonna stay the same. So we still have two T minus three out here. If we combine our like terms, we have two T minus T, which is just one T. And then we have negative three plus three. These will cancel for zero and we get g minus h of t, which is written like this, is equal to t, which is the answer. On number one, it's actually easier because you're just adding the numbers together instead of having to subtract and distribute that negative. Okay, this is one of the problems also where Desmos is not super helpful on, um, and when Desmos does come up in this review, I'll make sure to show you my graphs and things like that. Okay, next one we're gonna do is number four. Uh, and number four, the instructions are find the inverse of each function. Okay, so to do this, we're gonna have to do the four steps that I've written on my board over on the side of the room. But you guys can't see that because you're watching a YouTube video right now. Okay, step one. We're gonna take g of x and we're gonna replace it with y. So we're gonna say y equals three x minus six. Step two says that we need to switch x and y. So step two would be x equals three y minus six. And then finally, step three would be to solve for y. So our goal here is to get y by itself. And we have two things in the way. We have a negative six and we have that three being multiplied. So to take care of the six, we're going to add six to both sides. So we get x plus six is equal to three times y. And then just to not zoom out or change my screen at all, I'm going to draw an arrow over here. To get y by itself, we are going to divide both sides by 3, and we're going to divide the entire left side by 3. So we're going to end up with a big fraction. And we end up with, well, because the 3s cancel out, we end up with y is equal to x plus 6 divided by 3, all in one big fraction. Step 4 is actually kind of unnecessary if you're doing a multiple choice test. Step 4 is just to write y as f inverse of x. And we're going to write down the exact same equation. Nothing's going to change about that. And that would be the inverse of g of x. I guess, you know what, I guess I should have put in, should have put in uh, g inverse. Put in's not a word. I should have put g inverse, not f inverse. Moving right along to number six. Number six says, find the domain and range of each. I want you on your review to write these things down. These are arrows to help you remember what these things are. So your domain is your X values. That's your left and right. So you're looking where the function is left and right. Your range is your Y values. So you're looking up and down. Domain and range, X and Y. If you always say it in that order, you'll never mix them up. Domain and range, X and Y. Okay. To do this, you could remember all the transformation rules, such as the fact that this graph was translated two units down from the minus two, or you could just go type it in, which is what I'm deciding to do. So instead, we will simply, and I will figure out where my mouse is. Oh my God. 
I might have to cut this. Okay, there we go. So we got a graph right here. And all I did was type in exactly uh, what the problem says. And you guys can't see it. So let me pull it over here. I'm so dumb. Oh, here it is. Okay, good. Let's see. So we have uh, the exact function that uh, we saw on the paper. We just typed it in. And the most important point here is, well, if we zoom out, we notice it goes up and to the right forever. Okay, so it always increases. It's always going to the right and it's always going up. We also notice um, the vertex... If we zoom in a little bit, the vertex is right here at negative two, negative two. Okay, so I'm gonna write that down on my review, my vertex, or actually I'll even draw a sketch. We have a graph that starts here and goes up and to the right forever. Since it goes up forever, well, since it goes to the right forever, my domain is all of my X numbers greater than or equal to negative two. Another way to write this, which is just an alternate notation, is to consider all the values of x between negative two and positive infinity. And since we have a greater than or equal to sign, this would actually be a bracket if we're using this notation. This is just a separate type of notation that we've used in the past, and it might be helpful to know. So this is just a separate type of notation. I'll try to draw a line here so you can see uh, the two types. There we go. So for range, it's gonna be all of the y values this time. And since it goes up forever, starting at negative two, it's gonna be all the y values greater than or equal to negative two. And so the uh, notation actually looks the same for the range. Because it starts at negative two and goes up to positive infinity. Once again, the domain's talking about going to the right to infinity. The range is talking about going up to infinity and beyond. All right, moving on. Spoilers, uh, people watching the video, there was an entire audience of people that did not laugh at that joke in my room right now. So I just want you to know that. Okay, let's see. So number 10, we have an absolute value inequality. I left this one. Um, I, there's a reason why I skipped both of these. It's because we can solve it about the same way. And as long as you just type it in, number seven and number eight shouldn't be a big deal. As long as you can just type it in. You might not remember how to type in an absolute value. Uh, and you might not remember what an absolute value is. So let's just review it really quick. The absolute value of three is three because it's a positive number, nothing happens. The absolute value of negative three is also three. That's what the absolute value function does. It takes any negative numbers and makes them positive. So when we're looking at this situation, we could either go type it in or we could do it the legit way, which is considering the positive and negative cases. That being said, I much would rather just type it in. So we consider a couple things. First of all, uh, we need to use an X. If we want to use Desmos, we need to use X's. So that way we can see what we're looking at. They don't like to use the letter N. Um, and we also need to consider the fact that we have a less than or equal to sign, which means that we're gonna be using closed circles as opposed to open circles. Okay, when we go type this in, this is what we see which is a shaded region in between the points negative five and negative one. Okay, so a shaded region in between the points negative five and negative one. Notice how if I change this to a less than sign, uh, the lines become dotted, just like we would use an open circle on the one dimensional case. So it needs to be greater, uh, less than or equal to, so that, that way these lines are solid, just like our dots will be solid. So once again, those two numbers are gonna be negative five and negative one. So we head back here. Uh, we put a closed circle at negative five, put a closed circle at negative one, and we shade in between. This is what's called the solution set. AKA all of the numbers that make the inequality true. All of the numbers that make the inequality true. As in when you plug them in, you take negative that number minus three absolute value of that it has to be less than or equal to two okay um for seven and eight you will not have a set of solutions you will just have two solutions okay so you won't be shading on seven and eight but for number nine you might be shading because it's an inequality okay uh i think well there's your hint for 11 and 12 there's your hint uh, so pause the video here if you need more time to read that hint uh number 13 i think is pretty straightforward Enough so that I don't feel like it warrants the video. You might be scared of number 13 because it has words, but do not be scared of words. 
The last one we're gonna do on this half of the video is gonna be number 14, which involves a system of three equations with three variables. What we're gonna do is use elimination. That's when you add up two equations. You just stack up two equations and you try to add them up. So for example, if we take these two equations right here, I'm just gonna put them in their own little box, and let's say we are gonna add them up. Okay, so from left to right, we're just gonna add these equations up. Okay, and we're ignoring, for now, we're ignoring this top equation. So do not use that as part of your going into it. Also, don't draw that line. Okay. We're gonna add these two equations up. And the reason why I'm gonna add these two is because I'm noticing something very convenient here. And that is the fact that we have a plus four Y and a negative four Y. When I add these together, that will be zero. And then the other pieces might be zero as well. Well, look at this, we have negative two X plus two X, that is zero. Plus zero, because that's what four Y minus four Y is. And then we have plus three Z plus two Z would be five Z. And this is equal to, uh, well, let's see, negative 15 plus 10 would be negative 5. So we get the equation 5 times z equals negative 5. Well, there's only one number that you can multiply by that you will get the negative version of. So we take 5 times that number, we get negative 5. You could divide both sides by 5, but at the same time, z is just equal to negative 1. It's not that big of a deal. Negative 1 is the only number that would make sense there. And that's one of the answers. There are three, X, Y, and Z. So that's one of my answers. Yeah, you know, we in here for real, Mr. Stories class. Make sure I like, subscribe, and everything. All right, peace out, bucks. Let's pick up where we left off on number 14. Uh, what you can see here is that we are exactly at the step where we found out what Z was. Once we know that uh, Z is negative one, all we're gonna do is type in equation one and equation two into Desmos, but we're gonna replace all the Z's with negative one. So that's exactly what I've done on this graph right here, uh, which you can see both my equations match the first two. We just have a negative one wherever we see a Z. And if we click on the point where they cross, you get X and Y. X is two and Y is negative two. Oops, which we found on Desmos. X equals two and Y equals negative two. And so those are our three answers. You could also write your answer like this, two comma negative two comma negative one. That's also a way that you can write it, where that's X, Y, and Z. Okay, for the next couple, we're going on to quadratics, which means that Desmos is gonna be a lot more useful for the rest of this review. In fact, it's pretty much essential for the rest of this review. So essential that you guys can do this on your own for a fact, because you can just go type it in. Um, this one, you could just go type it in, but this one's actually so easy that we don't need to. So we're just gonna solve for X. What we're gonna do is get X by itself, which means that we're gonna add eight to both sides and we get X squared is equal to, let's see, that'd be uh, 13. To get rid of X squared, we just want X. We need to take the square root of both sides where the square cancels out the power of two. Uh, we get X is equal to plus or minus the square root of 13. And the reason why we have that plus or minus is because once again, whenever we take that square root, we have to consider uh, both cases. So uh, negative square root of 13 times negative square root of 13 also gets me 13. So we have to have plus or minus. So there's technically two answers, x equals square root of 13 and x equals negative root 13, which you could go to Desmos and look at those points, but they're just gonna look like decimals because the square root of 13 is not a whole number. Okay, uh, the next one we're gonna do is number 21 which once again, we're not gonna use Desmos because it's not that hard, but I will show you Desmos here in a second. We're gonna subtract six on both sides to get X by itself. We get two X squared equals negative six. And then we're gonna divide both sides by two and we get X squared is equal to negative three. And this is impossible. There's actually no solution. The reason why there's no solution is because you can never take a number times itself and then get a negative, okay? Unless that number is imaginary. In which case we have to consider, okay, maybe X is equal to, well, we should say there's no real solution. We should consider that X is equal to plus or minus 
i times the square root of three. It's weird like that, but that's just how it works. Um, I believe we have one more example to do just to show you that exact property. So I'm actually gonna skip around a little bit. We're gonna go from 21 all the way to 24 just to talk about that property a little bit more. Um, and then let me also show you the graph of this. So the reason why I know there's no real solution is because that's where it crosses the x-axis and this graph does not cross the x-axis at all. So there's no solution. Okay, we're gonna jump over to number 24 just really quick and then we'll come back to 23 to talk about this property of the number i, which is the square root of negative one. If you get some number uh, a and you take the square root of negative a, that's equal to i times the square root of a. So in this case, this would be equal to i times the square root of 16. The square root of 16 is four. So we get our answer as four i. Okay, and that's just simplifying like that. We're gonna detour back over to number 23, kind of going out of order, but oh well. Um, to talk about factoring, um, you could factor this using the box, and I'm gonna leave that up to y'all whether you want to do that or not, um, except I'm gonna use X's instead of N's, so I'm gonna use X squared, put a 12 here. Um, if you do factor this, you do get X plus three and X plus four, because those will add up to seven X. You could do it this way if you wanted to, and you could get uh, x plus three times x plus four is equal to zero, uh, in which case you can get the two solutions. So you can use the box, or you could just run over to Desmos, because you know that if you just type this into Desmos with some x's, you will get the right answer. So what you see here is negative four and negative three, which is pretty much what we got, except the signs are flipped. So you have to remember to do that if you're gonna use, uh, use Desmos, the signs will flip. So we have this plus three and plus four, but the answers are actually negative three and negative four. Okay, so those are actually my two solutions. Um, if we go back to Desmos really quick, um, let's see. We can set this equal to zero, just like it's written. That just changes it from a parabola to two lines. You still get the same answer but it's not necessary. You can just type that in and get a parabola that passes through the same two points. So negative four and negative three. All right, let's finish this problem off. I accidentally closed my notes, but we're back. Or let's finish this review off, I should say. What do we got left? One more. Last one. Thank the Lord. Number 27. Uh, the only reason I wanna go over this one is so you remember the formula that you have to type whenever you do a quadratic regression. This is y1 squiggle, ax1 to the power of two, plus bx1 plus c. Okay, so you have to type that into Desmos along with your table. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. So I have my table of points already filled out right here. I go to the next line and I type it in. y1 squiggle, which you can get by searching around in the keyboard. It's actually right here is the squiggle. Um, or you can just hit shift and then it's over by your tab key on the left side of your keyboard. AX1 to the power of two plus BX1 plus C. And we get a parabola that passes through all three points. And most importantly, we get the values of A, B, and C. A is negative two, B is three, and C is negative one. A is negative two, B is three, and C is negative one, I believe. Let me double check that. Negative two, three, negative one. If my students were paying attention, they could tell me, but they're not, it's okay. Negative two, three, negative one. Okay, so we get those three numbers for A, B, and C. And to write my equation, it is super easy. All you have to do is put Y equals instead of Y squiggles, and we get negative two X squared plus three X minus one. And this is the equation that passes through those three points. You could also test this out just by typing it into Desmos. You'll get the same graph that you did with the table. That is the end of the review video. Hopefully you paid attention and I hope that you actually pause on certain places and you try them out. So for example, if you were totally paying attention to number 21, 23, and number 18, and you realize that you could just type all those into Desmos to get the answers, then you should. In fact, this entire page of the review, you can just pretty much type it in and get all the answers. That being said, I hope you have a great day. Uh, and remember to subscribe to the channel and stay healthy.